With each update to survival games, new progression metas emerge, and V Rising's Secrets of Gloomrod update is no different. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing how to optimize your progression and make the endgame grind a breeze. Let's get one thing out of the way. No matter the underlying meta, progression will still be largely linear due to the game's V-Blood system. These bosses unlock key research and spells, and with the Gloomrod update, most bosses have had their rewards altered, with new ones sprinkled in throughout the early, mid, and late game. This means things you might be expecting to unlock from one boss might now unlock at a completely different point during progression. This video is instead focused on getting your research done quickly and making sure by the time you hit the end game, you have the resources at your disposal to gain an edge. One of the biggest ways you'll gain an insane advantage in both research and resources is through the overhauled coin system. Gone are the days of dropping those useless silver coins. There are now three tiers of coins, copper, silver, and gold sun, that directly correspond to your progression tier and can be traded for anything from basic resources to full research books for specific items. Vendor camps now show up across Verderon. Copper coins can be traded at the Shady Dealer Camp in Farbane Woods, silver coins at the Farmer's Market in the Dunley Farmlands, and gold sun coins in the Bright Haven Trade District in Silverlight Hills. While the copper coins are good for those early research books and resources, the real stars are the silver and gold sun coins. At level 30, we also gain access to the brand new bag system, and by taking down Lydia the Chaos Archer, you unlock the new leather working station. Here you'll be able to initially craft small bags for additional inventory space to hold items specific to research, herbs, and gems. At level 47, you'll take down the V-Blood boss Bane the Shadow Blade, and he'll reward you with your fourth bag option, the Small Coin Purse. This item will completely shield you from the effects of silver and gold sun coins, and since you have flexible bag slots, you're looking at the potential to carry around 12 full stacks of silver or gold sun coins without ever needing to take a resistance potion. Talk about a great quality of life update. Now, the reason silver coins are so valuable is because at level 60, you're going to gain access to another new station, the Fabricator, by defeating Ziva the Engineer. Here, you'll see that there's an option to fabricate copper, silver, and gold sun coins. This function within the Fabricator becomes available at level 64 once you defeat the Duke of Balaton in the Cursed Forest, and honestly, the cost isn't bad for the amount of coins you produce at a time. If you've been effectively stashing away silver coins, you should be sitting on quite the hoard, and these will be primed to convert into gold sun coins. At an output of 15 to 20 per pop, this will give you an insane edge when it comes to purchasing research books from the Bright Haven Trade District while in human form, where books range from 16 to 28 gold sun coins per purchase. The only factor to consider is that the vendors do have a limited stock that rotates every hour. Use that time to effectively farm the surrounding area, create more coins with the Fabricator, while also farming other key resources. Our next tip is a quick one, and while it isn't anything new, it's worth mentioning. Fishing can yield a surprising amount of gems and research books. All bodies of water on the map randomly spawn little bubbling pools that, when interacted with, give you a one-time chance to pull something out of the water. There is no best spot for this, but some territories have been reworked with little bodies of water integrated into them, allowing you to essentially always have a fishing opportunity right outside your base. If you go into this expecting to get gems and books every time, you'll surely be let down. But being proactive and stocking up on fish for their valuable oil, bones, and benefits to your prisoners can help speed up your mid-game progression. If you happen to get some research books and gems in the process, that's just a bonus. Another quick tip that we think you should be aware of is to hoard every single gem you get along the way and always go out of your way to farm gem nodes wherever you see them. Why, you might be asking? Well, because of the brand new Spell Jewel system, something we go over in great detail in a dedicated video. The Harpy Nest in the northern and southern areas of Silverlight Hills are a fantastic place to farm these gems, and when those aren't up, you can always pop over to the city and open some containers or chests to likely find more flawless gems. You'll need a metric ton of these come endgame to not only tap into your spell's full potential via the Spell Jewel system, but also for crafting legendary weapons and even some amulets. Every single gem is useful because you can refine them into higher tier gems. And don't forget, you now have dedicated bags to carry gems, so there really is never an excuse to leave any behind. 
One crafting station that was a giant joke before the update was the paper press. It was locked behind a V-Blood unit, its recipe costs were a bit ridiculous, and it was just better killing things and looting chests than to ever actually use the station. That all changes with Gloom Rot. The paper press is quite literally the wide open door into the end game. Making paper alone is a breeze, just a little fiber and sawdust and you're off to the races. Scrolls are also super easy to produce, especially if you're out looting all of the paper and coarse thread you come across during your farming. The real game changer here though is schematics. The requirements for schematics are quite literally scrolls and text scraps, both of which you find in ridiculous abundance in the new Bloom Rot zone. Most of the time, you can just walk into an area that's completely littered in mutant grease and scraps due to the NPCs constantly waging war against each other. When that isn't the case, every town and point of interest in Gloomrot is home to a large amount of containers and resource nodes, which you can salvage for plenty of scraps. Slap all of this into your paper press and you'll be churning out so many schematics, you quite honestly won't know what to do with them all. One of the biggest complaints we saw during the closed beta period was the serious lack of silkworms available in the spider cave. These runs would barely yield one or two stacks and everyone on the map was competing for that resource. Imagine that on a PVP server. What if I told you that farming the spider cave is now a terrible strategy and that there is simply a better option, one that will net you dozens of stacks an hour. Our good old friend, the vermin nest has received some substantial updates for gloom rot and the recipe for spiderlings, which drop silkworms is no exception for the extremely low cost of a single fish bone and a handful of mutant grease. You'll produce six spiderlings at a time, get this rolling over three or four separate vermin nests and you'll generate a stack or more every single minute. This thing is running the best part. Not only does the gloom rot zone drop a ton of mutant grease, as we mentioned earlier, but the containers up here, especially in Rustlock village often contain a ludicrous amount of fish bones. If you're actively farming this area, you'll have all the cloth fish bones and mutant grease you'll ever want and ensure silk is never an issue for your team. It's no secret that creating a farm for all those growables and V rising is a huge benefit in the end game. But with this update, it becomes a necessity. Ghost yarn is a hot commodity and you'll need to craft a ton of it to keep your team and servants geared. You don't want to constantly go into garlic ridden areas for cotton or trudge through the cursed forest for ghost shrooms. It's just a time sink. Additionally, all flowers can now be put into the crusher to produce pollen, an essential resource for making your own coarse thread in the loom. Essentially, this opens up an infinite crafting loop that you can do almost entirely from inside your base. We also can't forget about sacred grapes, essential in making blood Merlot from your prisoners. You should make it a habit to always farm these from Silver Light Hills and check the trader in the city until you have enough seeds to reliably produce your own back at base. These not only are key materials in some end game recipes for onyx tears and amulets, but when it comes to keeping a stockpile of perfect blood, these take less health and give less misery with each extraction, meaning you'll need to use less fish to keep them alive and well. A well planned out farm, especially in or on top of your base, will keep these resources flowing and away from your neighbors trying to reap the rewards for themselves. Finally, let's talk about the premier locations to farm in the end game with the gloom rot update. Brighthaven and its subsequent harbor region is still one of the absolute best places to farm for materials, reinforced planks, glass, fish, you name it. The city probably has it. You'll be there anyways, farming elites for schematics and golden jewelry, since gold is a much more valuable crafting material with this update for a handful of end game items. Bright Haven was also a fantastic place to farm golden chests for those valuable tier three spell jewels. And a lot of the time we found them up in Azariel's church. If you're of an appropriate end game level and have some spare holy potions lying around, don't sleep on checking this area either. Now, when it comes to the newer crafting materials, the gloom rot zone actually has a lot of really fantastic locations to farm. If you're looking for depleted batteries, those walking automatons aren't the only source. And I'd actually argue they're the most inefficient way of gathering them. Pay attention to the small transcendum camps scattered around the zone. These will all have tech scrap resource nodes, even the ones that don't say so on the map. And upon fully harvesting a node, it will always drop a handful of depleted batteries. It shocked us, but we were able to get substantially more batteries doing a loop between all the smaller camps than any of the larger zones, such as the Transcendent Power Plant or Machine Factory. 
Those do still provide a great way to get easy radium alloy, but with all the scraps you're getting, it's probably easier just to craft it in a furnace since you get a generous four bars for each successful craft. Finally, Spectral Dust. It's a genuine pain to farm. Banshees and other enemies do still drop it, but the rate has been significantly turned down. Couple this with the fact that you're more likely to win the lottery than actually find ghost yarn in a container in the cursed forest, and this is one of those resources you'll be having a real mental crisis over stocking up on. While there isn't a knockout way to really farm this stuff, just know that stocking up on ghost crystals and picking up scourge stones whenever you're out in the cursed forest is better started early rather than later. Combining these crystals and scourge stones over in your grinder is 100% the best way to keep this valuable material available in your base. If you are running short on scourge stones, thankfully the ability to craft wet stones for super cheap and make scourge stones couldn't be easier with this update. Whether you're a veteran player returning for this update or someone just picking up the game for the first time, the end game of V Rising has changed rather significantly. Most of the resources you collect and refine have multiple avenues for their uses, so ensuring you have the best methods of getting those resources on your radar will set you up for success. Of course, there is much more to come, not just with this update, but with future V Rising content updates as well. If you're a returning player or new to Verderon, drop us a like and consider subscribing. We'll always keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of V Rising. I also want to invite you to join the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. If you're looking for a place to hang out, party up for V Rising, talk about great games, and win free prizes, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.